The whole point of passwordless is to have authentication that moves away from passwords. Yet in ID, you can't actually have a fully passwordless user. There's always that password kicking around in the background. Now, additionally, if we have a day one user, how do we get them up and running without a password? So this is where temporary access passes and conditional access come into play. In this video, I'll do the whole thing as a demo and we'll cover what they are, why they matter and their use cases. So let's go. This is the default Entra sign-in page. And this is where I'm going to start by illustrating two of the big problems that temporary access passes address. The first is looking at this page, I punch in my email address. And even if I want to then register a FIDO2 key and be fully passwordless from day zero, by default, actually, uh, it's still going to look for that password, right? Which may be that uniquely generated random password when a new account is provisioned. So hey, I'm still going to have to deal with a the password there, right? So that's one scenario where we're going to look at temporary access passes to help us out. The other scenario for that, what we're going to do is we're going to head over to the conditional access page in the intra admin center. And it's a challenge where we want to avoid a type of vicious circle. If I've already registered MFA, I probably want to be forced to do MFA once more to register additional MFA methods. So let me give you an example. Let's say I've got my phone set up for MFA. It would be bad if an attacker could register their phone as MFA, right? So I want to force me to do MFA once more just before I register that. Well, what if I've never registered MFA? If I have a conditional access policy, like the one you're seeing on screen just now, where we're saying to register security information, you have to satisfy MFA. Well, if I've never set up MFA in the first place, then where do I begin, right? So there's a challenge there of that vicious circle. So that day zero passwordless experience and satisfying MFA requirements to register subsequent MFA, these are two of the big use cases that we're going to look at to see how temporary access pass can help us resolve them. So that's the problems. Let's get started on looking at the solution and what TAP is all about. To do that, we're going to head back up and we're going to head to a page in Intra that's called Authentication Methods. This is a great page. And kind of does what it says on the tenant, and it lets us look at all the different sign-in methods we want to support. You'll see I've got one here, enabled currently for all users, called the temporary access pass. I've got that set up for all users. I could exclude certain users if I wasn't ready for them. But if I head to the configure page, this is going to really illustrate what TAP is all about. It's reasonably intuitive so far, I think you'd agree. It's temporary in so far as I can specify a minimum, maximum, and default lifetime for it. So it's almost a bit like a password that intrinsically will never be able to last longer than the values I specify here, hence the term temporary. And hence why it's a little bit more secure than a password because, hey, even if it gets lost, well, I know there's going to be that cutoff point there, right? I can also specify the complexity of it here. So this page here, this authentication methods page, this is where I kind of just enable it, right? Is it on or is it off for my tenant? It doesn't actually give users temporary access passes yet, and it doesn't satisfy that other problem I mentioned quite yet of the day zero problem. So that's the foundations of temporary access passes. Let's head now back to the conditional access page. And I'm going to go into authentication strengths. There's a number of ways of doing this. So I'm going to show you what I like to do. I've made a custom authentication strength and I've called it modern MFA. Authentication strengths are basically where you choose those types of methods we've seen earlier and you bundle them into an object. And then you say, well, if any of these are satisfied, that counts as what I'm looking for in conditional access. And you'll see here for mine, I've said Windows Hello, pass keys, certificate-based authentication, the authenticator app, or key to this video, temporary access passes. You'll notice I'm not including text messages, uh, mobile phone calls, anything like that, which is a little bit less secure. I'm looking for not the most secure things because I am allowing the authenticator app, but what we consider modern MFA. By including the temporary access pass here, even though that is just one factor, it's just one string of text, I'm saying, you know, because of the temporary nature of it and because of that trade-off I'm willing to make, I'm going to count that as MFA. That helps us get around that problem of, hey, if I've never registered MFA, how do I register to begin with? So let me now show you how a user can get up and running with this. I'll close that and I'm going to find a example user. Let me go up to my search bar here and I'm going to go into my user Donald. I will go to authentication methods. And you'll see here we have nothing registered yet. No authenticate wrap, no security key, nothing. Also, what I've done in the background here is, you know, by default, Entra generates that password that's like 
six or eight digits long. I mean, don't get me wrong, that's that's fine. But what I've done just to be completely ridiculous and overboard is I've generated a crazy long password and then I just binned it. Didn't take a note of it, nothing. So that deals with the fact that the password always has to be there for that user. But the user's never going to get it. So it's never going to be leaked. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add authentication method. I'm going to choose method and I'm going to choose that temporary access pass. The settings I get to control here these are bound by those 10 level settings we looked earlier, so the max and the minimum and things like that. Let's say it's a user's first day, and it, within the first half of that day, I would expect them to get up and running. So we'll say 180 minutes, that gives them three hours, and I'm not going to set this to one-time use, purely because, well, if they hit any bumps in the road, I don't want to ruin their experience. So let's add that temporary access pass to that user, and within three hours from now, uh, this will be unusable. I'm going to take a note of it. I'll just grab that there. I'll put that in my notes off screen. And I'm also going to grab this URL. As part of our onboarding process now, we really want to be saying to users, hey, this is the URL you need to go to to register additional security information. So for example, if I've got an autopilot laptop on day one, let's uh, get that device up and running. I log into it using my temporary access pass. And then after I'm up and running, I go to this URL to register a security key or another passwordless method. So that's my user up and running with a temporary access pass. Now we're going to jump over to the user login experience and see what that's like. For the sake of the demo, I'm not going to run through autopilot, but it is compatible with that. I'm going to assume I've got a user who's maybe hybrid, maybe a contractor, and they're working on this device that we're looking at here. I'm going to immediately head to that URL that we mentioned earlier. So let's punch that in, aka.ma slash info. The user isn't authenticated, so I will log in as that user. Uh, remember that username? Yeah, I got the username right at least. And you'll see here, use your temporary access pass instead. That's what we're looking for. I'm going to click into that, punch that in. I can look at it. There we go. That's it. Nice and simple. I'll hit sign in. And there you go. I got in. So even if I have a conditional access policy in place that requires MFA or requires a custom type of authentication strength, which includes temporary access passes, that's going to satisfy it. So it counts as temporary strong authentication. From there, what I want to do as the end user, or what you would educate your users to do, is I'm now going to register my security key. So I'll add their USB next, connect that up. Let's just punch that in. I'm going to go to connect my device there. Just do what you'll okay that. So we can see here it goes through the usual 502 security key setup process. I'll touch that. My passkey is now saved. I'm good to go. Seen how quick I did that. I mean, brand new user may take a little bit longer, but you understand how simple that was. I'll punch in the name of it. That's going to show up for the user from now on in that security info page. And just like that, within minutes, I have a user who is passwordless and enter ID right from the start of their journey with the organization. What I could do now if I wanted, I could delete that temporary access password. But now for subsequent authentications, uh, let's tell you what, let's sign out as my user. We'll do that. For subsequent authentications now, I can completely forget about that temporary access pass. We set it with a three hour expiration. Forget about it, doesn't matter now. Let's click into that user. I'll choose other ways to sign in. I'll choose my security key as a method. Gonna get that pop up, put in my pin for the security key. And here we go. I can just sail on through. And that is it. Passwordless from day one using temporary access passes as a bootstrapping method. If you found this useful, you might want to check out this other video we've got on common conditional access mistakes.